Hi guys, Andre from Conveyor Randomness here, and today I'll be talking about whether there is enough benefit to upgrade to an iPhone 12 from an iPhone 11. Following the Apple high-speed event in October and subsequent release of their new lineup of 14th generation phones in the iPhone 12, 12 Pro, 12 Pro Max and the 12 Mini, it leaves consumers facing the dilemma, do I get a new iPhone and if I do, which one? There are generally three categories of consumers wanting to buy new phones every year. First, you've got the consumers who either are getting their first phone or are upgrading from either another manufacturer or updating from an older phone. Secondly, you've got the consumers who essentially upgrade within their contract cycle. For example, if you bought an iPhone XS and took out a 24 month contract with your carrier, then you'd be due a new upgrade right now. Finally, there are the consumers who buy new phones as they are released. We've all fallen into at least the first two categories at some point in our lives. I'd love to be in the third category, of course. I'm currently in the second category in the middle of a two year contract cycle with an iPhone 11, but it still gets me thinking, are the advancements one year on from the iPhone 11 worth either trading in or buying the new iPhone 12? For the purposes of this video, I'll only be talking about a straight upgrade from the 11 to 12 and not any of the other variants. So let's start off with Apple's big announcement during their event, 5G. The 12 series comes with 5G, while the 11 series has 4G. While yes, 5G is inevitable, full high speed nationwide, even worldwide, 5G is still a while away. Huge steps have been made with the 5G infrastructure, but this is still ongoing. The future of what 5G is capable of is truly amazing and will revitalize the telecommunications world as we know it. 4G isn't slow though, and we've been used to its faster capabilities when compared to 3G for some time now. I rarely use my phone on anything other than Wi-Fi these days. Either when I'm at home or work, I'm always connected to the local Wi-Fi and will often do my major downloading or streaming on these local networks. When I'm out, I'll rely on the 4G to either watch YouTube videos or listen to music. But these two services are more than capable for the 4G data allowance that you're often given in your contract. The 11 is packed with the impressive A13 Bionic, while the iPhone 12 benefits from that extra year's worth of research and development with the smaller chip, the A14 Bionic, which Apple claims to have a 40% increase in CPU and 30% increase in GPU compared to the A13. The iPhone 12 series are definitely the quickest, most powerful phones that Apple have ever made, but the iPhone 11 is certainly no slouch. I've noticed no reduction in capability and performance over the year. It's certainly a workhorse through a mixture of video watching, game playing, video making, editing throughout the week, every week. Yes, the A14 is vastly superior, but it was only 12 months previous that the A13 was best in class. The major change came in design, while the 11 stayed with the same or similar curved exterior since the last major design change in the iPhone 6, the iPhone 12 series have reverted back to the flat sided design look found on the iPhone 4 and 5S, which to this day is still my favourite iPhone design, and brought back fond memories of my own iPhone 4S. Both phones have the 6.1 inch screen, but where last year Apple opted for the two tier hierarchy in terms of screen quality, giving the 11 the liquid retina HD LCD display and the 11 Pro's the OLED. This year, the whole series gets the Pro displays with the Super Retina XDR OLED displays with the added ceramic shield, which claims to provide four times more drop protection compared to previous iPhone generations, which is definitely a feature I'd have liked in the 11, especially after dropping and breaking my 11 screen not too long ago. In addition to this, the 12 has a greater pixel screen density and contrast ratio. So having these two side by side, you'll notice the 12 has a greater display definition, but in isolation without seeing the better screen displays, I would say that the 11 still has a very credible screen and provides lovely looking visuals. Despite having the same screen size, the 11 is slightly bigger in every dimension and heavier. And you know what? I actually don't mind the knot. The 11 and 12 have the same wide, ultra wide and front camera. The difference is that the 12 is able to film in up to 30 frames per second in the new Dolby Vision HDR and Smart HDR 3 in photos. The aperture on the 12's wide angle camera is slightly smaller and at an f-stop of 1.6 compared to 1.8 on the 11. So you'll get a slightly better bokeh effect on the 12 and now both cameras on the 12 have night mode. So you'll be able to get even better quality low light shots. So you'll be able to really 
push yourself to capture those beautiful nighttime photography and videography shots that you weren't able to get before. Security wise, with all this mask wearing happening in society and difficulty in unlocking your phone with a mask on and always having to annoyingly put in your passcode, I would have liked to have seen Touch ID incorporated into the 12, the same as they did in the top button on the iPad Air, but this wasn't to be this year as they stuck with the same face ID. So those were some of the main features that I look for when I'm deciding whether to upgrade my phone. From these points, I don't think for me that there are enough advancements to upgrade from the iPhone 11 to the iPhone 12. From 5G not quite being there yet to the minor adjustments in the camera technology, the jump from the 11 to the 12 is so minor, although <laughs> that flat edge design does really intrigue me. Anything prior to the 11, I'd say yes, the upgrade is worth it. Or even if you wanted something smaller and upgraded to the 12 mini or something more powerful and upgraded to the 12 Pro or Pro Max, that would be more worth it in my opinion. In my circumstances, I think I'd be better off waiting for the iPhone 13, which obviously would be a further improvement on the 12 and you never know, we may even get the higher refresh rate. Would you upgrade from the 11 to the 12? What features do you think are important when you're deciding whether to upgrade? Just let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like and subscribe to the channel. It would be greatly appreciated and it would help the growth of the channel and press the bell icon to get notified every time I release a new video. That's all for me today. I will see you on the next one. Bye. Why don't you go and watch one of these two videos here before the time runs out? Three, two, one.